I'd like to begin today with our land acknowledgement um, that McMaster recognizes and acknowledges that is located on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and Haudenosaunee nations and within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. So I would like to welcome you on behalf of uh, DeGroote. Um, and I have with me many members of our student experience team. Uh, so you may recognize some of us from um, the orientation guide that we shared. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that they were hearing um, sort of what your questions were um, and that uh, you had a chance to see the people that are responding to all of your emails and will be supporting you through the enrollment process. Um, so today we are focusing on the logistics uh, for enrollment for um, Business One and IBH One. Um, I appreciate that you likely have a lot of questions around um, sort of on-campus activities and uh, COVID-related manners, manner, matters. Um, and I will encourage you uh, to view the um, McMaster Wide Student Town Hall um, that is happening this afternoon at 4 p.m. Uh, it will be streamed on YouTube. Um, for those of you who are watching this recording uh, later, I, I expect that there will be a recording of the student town hall as well. Um, so that is the best place to understand sort of how McMaster is approaching the return to campus and, and the decision process for, for how we've arrived to where we are. Um, so for today, I want to focus on ensuring that you have what you need for enrolling in classes when enrollment opens um, and making sure you understand what your different requirements are and really what to, to worry about now and what, what can wait to worry about uh, later. So we'll get started. Um, and then I'll note also, sorry, that we are uh, taking questions um, and we'll have time at the end for questions. So likely a number of your questions will be addressed through the presentation. So I'll take some time at the end to answer questions. Um, so I'm gonna give a bit of an overview of uh, the different course requirements. And then we're going to have a, a live demonstration of, um, of the enrollment process um, from one of our um, former students and current uh, support uh, for your enrollment. Uh, so first, I do want to share, um, so whether you are coming to Business One or IBH One, uh, you are what we call a BCom student. Um, so the IBH degree is a Bachelor of Commerce degree, and our Commerce degree is a Bachelor of Commerce degree. Uh, so our team is the BCom student experience team. Um, so this is our academic um, contingency. Uh, we also have a career team um, that you'll meet on campus. Um, as I mentioned, uh, you should have received this picture. Um, that shares with you who some of your academic advisors are that you'll meet over the course of your time with McMaster. Um, and then we have a couple of people today on the call that are our summer staff. Um, so Nadia, Nav, and Nadia and Nav, I think that that's who's here. We have a couple more people uh, that aren't on the call today, uh, but this is the, the team that uh, we hope will get to know you over the next several years. Uh, I have the longest title, so I get to, I get to speak first. Okay, so first I wanted to share um, what are the required courses um, for level one. Um, so for, for uh, some of these courses are offered in both terms. Um, some are offered just in the one term, uh, but I just wanted to review with you and some of the different considerations as you begin your enrollment process. Um, so first we have our Commerce One Grow. Um, so this is our sort of experience and development course where you will learn um, sort of that how to transition to university and get some good career advice and um, some of the materials that are being taught in your um, other required courses are being augmented and enhanced through this one grow. Uh, so it is a zero unit course. Um, so the, the full course load for level one students is 15 units per term. So the commerce one grow is not part of that 15 units. So you'll often hear maybe from your upper year students that you should have 15 units or five courses per term. Uh, so it is 15 units, um, but you might have that sixth course, which is the Commerce One Grow because it's a zero unit course. So it's graded as a pass fail. Um, it's, it's much less intensive than uh, you know, introduction to accounting as an example. 
Um, so this happens, so you'll notice that it has a letter, uh, the letter A, um, and that's because it is in the fall. Um, this is a full year course. So when you enroll in section one, one grow A, uh, you'll automatically be enrolled in section one of one grow B, which is in the fall term. So you'll see that one grow B is happening in the fall, uh, but you only have to enroll once. Um, and it's very important that you enroll in one grow A first, because then one grow B will be added for you. Um, you can't enroll in one grow B without being enrolled in one grow A. Um, but when you're looking at your timetable and what sections and other courses and electives that you're hoping to take, uh, just be mindful that the one grow is at the same time for both terms. Okay. Um, so then we have Commerce 1A83. Um, so this is offered in both terms, but we are encouraging students to take this in the fall term. Uh, this will be completely virtual. Um, it's one of our larger classes. Um, some of our sections go as high as 400 students. Uh, there is sections planned for the winter, um, but we do encourage uh, you to move through as a cohort. As I mentioned, uh, in GROW, the GROW course, one GROW, uh, you will be discussing some of the materials that you are taking um, concurrently in your other required courses. So we do try to keep you together um, for those commerce courses. Um, one GROW, uh, sorry, commerce, one BA3, um, similarly is offered both in the fall and the winter, but we are again encouraging you to take this in the fall term. Uh, we have both in-person as well as virtual sections uh, for the Commerce 1 BA3. Um, so we have a limited number of in-person seats and then our virtual seats we can add as required. Um, so you'll see that, that you can enroll and you'll just be very mindful of the section that you're choosing um, and note whether they have in-person or virtual. Um, and you'll see that when NAV does the demo a little bit later where you can see that information. Um, and then when I do talk about in-person versus virtual, uh, the in-person just means that there is in-person components. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is every lecture or every week necessarily. It just means that there is in-person components and then each instructor is managing the students in their course um, to meet the requirement, the, the size of the room and what the, the current uh, restrictions are. Um, so we, we hope as we go into the fall and deep into the fall that uh, we do get back to our normal capacities, which will allow for the entire section to come on the Monday section uh, Monday slot, um, but it might be the case that we're starting where only half of the class can come on the Monday and the other class half comes on the, the Wednesday section. Uh, so for Commerce 1 MA3, um, so similarly it's offered both in fall and winter, but we do encourage you to take it in the fall. Um, and this will also have both in-person and virtual sections. Uh, and then those are the, the Commerce courses. So then students are also taking uh, three courses as part of the requirements outside of the Degree School of Business. Um, so that is Econ, uh, Micro and Macro, um, as well as the math course that occurs in the winter term. So uh, this is where our, our students will be, um, so where we will have students take, some students will take, so all of our students, sorry, will take one BO3 in the fall. So Econ one BO3, so both IBH students as well as Business One students. Uh, please plan to take one BO3 in the fall. Uh, this is a completely online course, and online means uh, asynchronous, which means there is not a set time. Um, so where you do see the, your uh, accounting course um, is virtual, and I want to make a distinction between virtual and online. Uh, your virtual accounting class will be at the same time on the same days every week for the entire term. Uh, whereas this Econ 1 BO3 is an online course, uh, which is asynchronous, which means the lecture materials are made available to you and you access them um, whenever that makes the most sense for you. So it's asynchronous. So Econ 1 BO3 in the fall term is asynchronous, um, so fully online. And then Econ 1 BB3, which is the macroeconomics, uh, will be also be uh, fully online and asynchronous in the fall term, okay? So I'll come back to the econ in a minute, but those are the courses that we expect you to be enrolling in for the fall term. Um, and then you'll see at the bottom that there's zero to three units of non-commerce electives. 
And the zero to three um, is because some of you will take one BB3 in the fall and some of you will take it in the winter. If you take one BB3 in the fall, uh, you will have no electives in your fall term. Um, but if you take one BB3 in the winter, you will have three units of electives. Uh, and these electives come from outside of the faculty. Um, so students are enrolling in history courses or anthropology courses or biology courses. Um, so those are completely um, up to you, uh, what makes the most sense. Uh, we will talk about minors uh, in a few minutes to see if you have the opportunity to begin your work uh, towards your minor as early as your first term. Okay, so then looking at the winter term, as I mentioned, uh, you will automatically be enrolled in one grow B as you um, enroll in one grow A. Uh, we have Commerce 1 DA3, 1 EO3. Um, so those are the commerce courses that you'll take. Uh, these are planned to be primarily in person, um, although each of these will have a virtual section. Um, if you're looking at the timetable today, uh, 1 EO3, we're still determining which of the sections is going to be virtual. Um, so that's the only one that doesn't show the virtual section in the timetable today, but that will all be confirmed before you enroll. Um, so those are scheduled, again, um, to give students that are unable to um, travel to Canada or have other considerations, uh, this virtual option is available, um, but primarily um, in person uh, for these sections. Uh, and then Econ 1BB3 is typically taken in the winter term. Um, it is going to be offered in person. Um, and this is where the bulk of our students will take this course in person on campus in the winter term. Okay. So, and I'll come back to that in a second. And then finally, there's the Math 1 MM3. Um, so this is where most of our students will take this course. Uh, this is our required calculus course. Um, students that are interested, so you'll, you'll note that we have a, a note here about the Math 1 AO3. Um, if you are intending on taking upper year math work or doing a math minor, then you should consider taking Math 1 AO3. Um, but most of our students um, are, take this applied calculus and it's applied to business. <laughs> so it's much more customized and um, tailored towards business students. Uh, so ours is the largest group within this class. Um, so again, most of our students will take Math 1 MM3 in the winter. Uh, and this is currently scheduled um, to be in person as well. Uh, there is not a virtual section available for this course. Um, so uh, if, if this is, um, we can revisit this. We want you to enroll in one of the existing sections of Math 1 MM3. Um, and then in the fall term, as we sort of have a better sense on how the world is uh, recovering from COVID, um, we can discuss any sort of special um, consideration that you might need if, again, you are taking your second term outside of Canada as an example. Um, but we're asking that you sign up for your courses, all of your courses um, that you see in the timetable today, and we can work out any special situations um, later when we sort of have a better sense of what the world looks like. So then finally, um, again, depending on when you're taking your econ, when BB3, uh, you will have either th two, three or six units of non-commerce work. And I should mention that the typical course um, is a three unit course, which is why this is in multiples of three. So you'll note that the last number in each of your required courses, with the exception of the GROW course, uh, which is zero units, um, all reflects the number of units that you receive for the course. Okay, so that's just some of the background. Again, we're recommending that you enroll in the terms um, as described here. Again, if, again, you, believe that you might be outside of Canada in the winter term or outside of the, the region, um, strongly recommend you're taking the Econ 1BB3 in the fall because that is when it has the online offering, whereas in the winter it will be in person. Okay. So I, I will pause and take some questions um, before we go into the demo, but um, I'm hoping we're off to a good start with that. So then looking at our IBH. Sorry, Greg, did you want some questions now or are you gonna talk about IBH first? Um, I can take the questions 
Well, let me go through IBH first because um, there Perfect. might be some similar things and I might have a chance to reiterate some things here. Perfect. Um, so for our, for our IBH students, um, it, it's a more of a fixed schedule. So no electives um, and you're working through the, uh, through the program as a cohort. So you'll be with the other 50 some odd um, IBH students for each of these courses. Um, all of them will have a virtual option um, and many of them will have an in-person option, okay? But because there is only one section of each, um, you'll see um, it noted as either in-person, um, where there is in-person components, but that is also available virtually. So even if you see in-person, know that virtual is available. Um, but again, we only have one section of each of these courses. Um, so every one of them will have virtual um, availability and some of them will have in-person components as well. Um, and as you see, because it's a little bit more fixed, um, students are taking the micro in the fall and the macro in the winter. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. I, I think level one enrollment is uh, very straightforward for IBH students um, because you move through as a cohort and you only have one <laughs> choice of sections. So it should be pretty, pretty, straightforward for you to do that enrollment. Okay. And you also note that there, um, the IBA students do not participate in the, in the GROW series. So the GROW is for the, the commerce students or business one students rather. So I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, great. We're, there's a little bit of confusion about GROW. Um, could you just reiterate um, that GROW, you'll take a GROW course in each of your four levels and um, remind students about what A versus B means in a course code? Yeah, so you'll have very, very, very few courses um, that have an A, B um, section. And typically where you do have an A, B section, this zero is a six. So if you're taking a full year French course, that is French 1AA6, you'll see you're taking 1AA6A in the fall and 1AA6B in the winter. So AB just denotes that it's a full year course and that A is in the fall term and B is in the winter term. Um, so the GROW um, courses are part of a series. Um, so there is a two GROW and a three GROW and then in fourth year, it's a course called 4GR3. Uh, we still call it part of the GROW series, but it does have units and it doesn't spell GROW, unfortunately. So it's 4GR3. And that's our capstone course for the program. Um, so in your fourth year, you will take 4GR3. Thanks, Greg. There's a number of students asking if they have to take a high school data analytics course in order to take 1DA3. So. This, this, this is, a, if, if, you, if you take one of a few messages away from here, it's that please do not listen to upper year students with regards to your program requirements because they have different program requirements than you will. So every new class, um, it's very important and you'll see in the academic calendar um, that there's a version for students starting in September, 2021. Um, so that is you. Um, so students beginning in 2021, uh, that did not defer. So if you deferred, reach out to us. There's a, it's a little bit different, but students that uh, are beginning the program this year uh, did not require the high school data management because you are taking this Commerce 1DA3 business data analytics. And again, it's very similar um, to the data management course. So if you have taken it, great. You'll, you'll have heard some of this before. If you haven't taken it, don't worry, we're teaching it as though you have not taken grade 12 data and data management, um, but it's going to be data management as applied to business. So it's, again, it's very tailored um, towards business students. And then it's also part of a series where you'll see in level two, you take uh, commerce two. So this is for commerce students. And again, in IBH, there is an IBH version of this. Um, so you'll see a lot of the core business curriculum that um, commerce students are taking um, is also um, being replicated in the IBH program. So you'll see that um, business one students take intro to financial accounting and IBH students take financial accounting, which is also intro to financial accounting. So uh, the business content between the two courses is very similar. Um, so again, 
business one students will take this commerce one DA3. Uh, the IBH students will take a second year data analytics course um, that's similar. Okay. Um, I hope that answered the question, but basically that you will not have to, you don't have to have taken data management. And again, you'll, you'll, you don't have to take data management is the bottom line. Lots of questions about how many units should I take in fall versus winter. Um, if you could tell us, uh, talk to students a little bit about, you know, why you don't want to take seven or eight courses in one term and maybe only four courses in winter. Uh, so we, uh, so in your first year, it is very standard. Uh, in your upper years, then you do have greater flexibility to overload one term versus another. Um, but again, for students that are transitioning to university, um, understanding that it is a big transition, uh, we do restrict students to a maximum of five courses with units. So one, two, three, four, and either one of these, um, plus your grow course. Um, you can take less, right? So if you want to take one less course, um, so if you want to talk to us about taking marketing uh, in the summer next year, Rather than taking in the fall, if you want to come in and take a, a reduced load, that is completely available to you. Uh, but again, what I'd like for you to do is enroll in each of these courses so you have that space. And then once the enrollment dust has settled, um, please come and speak with us and we can talk to you about what does taking four courses look like in the fall and or winter or three courses or two courses. Um, you know, what is typically offered in the summer? If I take a summer course versus taking this in the fall, what does that mean for my prerequisites? Or when do I uh, qualify for level two? We're happy to have all those conversations. Um, but as a starting point over the next two weeks, I'd like you to enroll in these courses as we've, as we've shared here today. And then we can look and talk to you about what it looks like to, to customize. Um, and just to note the dates we have up until September, um, the second week of September to make changes for the fall term. And then we have all the way up until January, the second week of January to make changes for the winter term. So we do have a lot of opportunity to have those discussions. And for you, if you come in and say that, wow, you know, I'm gonna take four and four, and then you find out that, well, I wish I had taken five. Um, you still have time to add that course for the winter. Or if you come in and say, wow, five is too much. You still have time to change your winter to four courses or three courses. Um, and even withdraw from some of your fall courses. So you will hear me say this, and I will say it probably several times even today, that enrollment is a process, it is not a date. So on June the 29th, if you don't have um, your schedule as uh, your ideal schedule yet, please do not be concerned. There is lots of time to have discussions to make sure that you're making informed decisions. Um, and again, you your life might be changing, but again, at a minimum, the, the entire world is changing, um, especially over the next three to six months. Thanks, Greg. We're seeing a number of comments in the chat about some challenges when they're trying to register in, this, in the B section of One Grow, getting uh, error messages. So I've just suggested that students email us, um, leave that with us. Let's see if there's a system issue um, yeah. and so, check so you just, tomorrow. Yeah, so you just need to enroll in the One Grow A and you will be added automatically to one grow B. Okay. Yeah. And if you're so, still getting that error message, just email Buzzcom with your name and student number and a screenshot. But again, I think, I think you don't enroll, you don't really enroll into one grow B, you enroll into one grow A and one grow B shows up. Okay. More questions, Greg, or do you wanna move forward? Um, I'm happy to do a couple more questions. Okay. This is, this, is, um, this is really the, the meat of it. Um, and then we're going to get into the logistics. And again, we'll have a recording. Um, even if there's additional pieces that we want to share via video, we can add that to the recording. Um, and again, I'm, I'm happy to run over. Um, so here's, here's what we'll do. So we'll, we'll, um, I'll move forward in this uh, so we can do the demo. And then I'm happy to stay on and take questions after the demo as well. Okay, so the, so again, what I really want everyone to focus on is again enrolling in all of your required courses, and then there'll be time to fine tune. Um, the only other things to really think about, as I mentioned, to, to worry about now versus um, later, is start to think about what minors you might be interested in. 
Um, and you can see in the calendar, and you'll see that this is a live link that takes you to the calendar. Uh, maybe unshare my screen for a second here. Okay, so you should uh, be able to click on that and see in our calendar. And again, you always want to make sure you're looking at our most recent version of the calendar. Here are some older versions. Um, and you'll be able to see as you scroll down um, all of the different miners that are available at McMaster. So business students are taking minors outside of the faculty. So you cannot do a minor in business as a business student, and you cannot do a minor in accounting as a business student, but you can do a minors in art history and chemistry and French and Greek, et cetera, et cetera. So here's a long list of the minors. Uh, many of our students that do are participate in the minor in innovation. So I'll click on that. And then you can see what is required for the minor in innovation. And you see that there are there is a level one course um, for the innovation minor. And if you click on that, you can see what is required. So there's no prerequisites for this course. So level one students can enroll. Uh, if you look at 2X, uh, also no prerequisites. As you get up into the upper levels, I assume you need to have, again, registration in level two or above. Um, but if you're looking for electives um, for your first year, I think and think about what minors you might be interested in because you can begin work towards your minor uh, right away. Uh, your typical minor is about 24 units, so eight courses. Um, so again, that's just something to think about now um, as you do your enrollment. And then the other piece, again, just to start thinking about now is um, our student accessibility services. Um, so they work with students um, that need academic accommodations. Um, so I'll give you one example that's very applicable to enrollment. Um, so if a student uh, were taking a particular medication that made them drowsy in the evenings um, and they needed to have classes that were uh, earlier in the day, um, it's important that you've worked with SAS and we understand, uh, and we work with SAS to understand what is required and we will help um, create that schedule that, um, that is required for you. Um, but if a student came to me and said, well, I can't take any morning classes. And I'd say, well, sorry, you just have to enroll in whatever's available. Um, it, it's, it's not for you to, the, if, the, if there is a, a medical need, you don't need to share that with us. Um, we want to make sure that uh, your privacy is protected. Um, so we do have this office and their intake uh, for you to work directly with them if there are those special requirements. Okay. So those are that's uh, uh, that's really it. Um, and again, we're we're going to share some of the our summer programming that is offered by both Degroot as well as McMaster. Um, but we don't really need to talk about that today. These are all things that really follow enrollment. But just wanted to highlight that there is a lot of summer programming uh, that is available to you, um, both from McMaster as well as Degroot. Okay. So at this stage, I am going to turn it over to Nav. Um, to walk through um, sort of what you'll see when you go into the timetable tool as well as Mosaic. Um, and then again, I'll take any um, more questions at the end. So thank you very much and take it, Nav. Thank you, Greg. I'm just going to be sharing my screen here with you guys. Um, let's see here. Okay. So this is what your portal is. Yeah, your portal will look like when you open up your Mosaic tool. So. Uh, when we open it up, the first thing that we're going to go to and explore is the creating your timetable, my timetable app or tile here. And then we'll go into the more nitty gritty stuff um, in your Mosaic portal in your student center. So we'll start it off with the timetable. So when you're going to click my timetable, this is exactly what's going to pop up. Um, you'll have a choice between spring, summer, fall, winter. Uh, for right now, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like to build your timetable uh, for the fall semester. And then because obviously we can't enroll yet, I'll show you what um, your confirmation of enrollment looks like using the spring summer uh, semesters. So let's start off with fall. Um, I'll walk you guys through what we're looking at here. So this is the selection tool. Uh, we'll start on the right hand side. Up here you have your uh, semester selector. You guys won't have the advise a student tab, obviously, uh, but 
uh, you can select between semesters. So if I want to switch over to 2022 winter, I can do that, or I can go back to the fall. Um, and you start by punching in your courses. So let us start with commerce. Let's do one A3. All right, and as you can see, it'll pop up on the right hand side and it'll populate your timetable on the side here. Uh, there's also other options. So when we look at uh, our screen here, you see there's a choice between, um, at the same time, there is lecture three that's running at the exact same time as lecture uh, core one. So just be cognizant of that fact. So uh, I, I know a lot of you have friends uh, that are going to be looking to enroll at the same time. So just make sure, and we'll verify in Mosaic as well afterwards, but uh, just make sure that you guys are enrolling uh, and you guys know what cores you're enrolling in. So I'm going to continue to populate this uh, timetable. So we have Commerce 1A3. Um, let's do Commerce MA3. Uh, there we are. And like Greg said, we've had a couple of questions from students saying, hey, like, um, I don't, I can't find the econ that I need for this semester, or I can't find the math. So it's important to note the course codes are different from last year to this year. So uh, for our math, it would be, you can take it in this semester, but it would be math 1MM3. And for your econ, oh, there it is, it popped up to that, 1MM3. And it says right there, math 1MM3, 2022 winter only. And then for econ for this semester, Econ, a lot of students are punching in 1BX3. So when you punch in 1BX3, we did change the course, or we didn't change the course code, but economics changed the course code. So that is not the correct course. Uh, you guys are looking to take 1BO3. So I'm going to select 1BO3 just for demonstration purposes. And then I'll also populate it with 1BB3. Awesome. And I will also add 1GROW-A. There we are. So uh, before I get into changing around the timings of your schedules, uh, one thing I wanna point out is a lot of students um, have inquired about this conflict that you see right here. So it's the uh, eight of 120 classes self conflict. So not to panic, all this means is that um, in your selected schedule uh, that we have over here, eight of the 120 classes don't work uh, or the eight of the 120 configurations don't work with your schedule, that doesn't mean that they all don't work. So uh, I know Greg's iterated this before. Take your time and go through each one and see what works best for you. So if you look on the right-hand side of the screen here, uh, this will change. So core one, core four, as you can see, the, the courses are changing. So sit around and play with it uh, to your heart's content. Make a schedule. Um, and you know, that suits you. Just know that when you guys go to enroll, these schedules aren't guaranteed. So we're gonna get into making favorites um, and, and setting up ideal schedules. So like Red, Greg said, you guys are guaranteed a seat in your program um, or you're guaranteed, you're guaranteed a seat in your required courses, but it might not be the seat that you want, but it will work with your schedule. So uh, like I said, uh, we're gonna go into setting up um, all of those favorites that you can do. So uh, when I mention favorites, it's right here underneath your schedule. If you click save as a favorite, uh, just the schedule right here. So we're going to click save as a favorite. Let's say I really like this schedule timing and it works for me. Um, I'm going to click this save as a favorite. It'll pop up uh, on your right hand side. So there's this little tab right here that you can click. Uh, it'll pop up. I do believe there's a limit. I think it's four or five favorites that you can do. Um, so it'll pop up right here. You click it and then you can change the name. So let's say this is schedule, schedule number two. Uh, and I go ahead and now it's saved as schedule number two. Um, I already created a, another one previously. So this is, um, my sample schedule that I created for demonstration purposes. So, uh, let's say I want to cycle between my favorites, uh, and I want to pull up a previous schedule that I made. All you would click is click load. And as you can see, my schedule has changed now. I have uh, the schedule that I had saved originally pop up. And just for continuity sake, we're gonna go back to the schedule that I made previously. Cool. Um, now we can close this. 
So here's another option that during my time um, with the group, we didn't have, but it's the personal time um, adjuster. So with some of you that are athletes or some of you that have uh, commitments with work, uh, you can put those into your schedule and it'll automatically block them out. So like you said, or like uh, it says right here, sorry, there's different options that you can do. So let's say hypothetically, uh, Monday 8 to 11, 8, or let's not do 8, let's do 11 a.m. to uh, 3 p.m. I'm working. So I'm going to add the time in. And as you can see, a black box will appear. And that's your personal time that you've um, allotted for yourself. And it'll automatically uh, show you on the schedule one. And if I unpin this commerce 1AA3, it'll move it to a time that works in my schedule. So uh, now you can play with it, right? So when you guys go and you guys are enrolling into courses, this pinning function is important. So if you want flexibility in your schedule, unpin these. And it'll, it'll try a different combination of courses that work with your schedule. So um, that's the personal, uh, personal time adder. You can add multiple different personal times. Let's say I also work Tuesday from, let's say, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. I add that time and it'll block that out. And as you can see, now that I block that out, it's given me a schedule that works better with my personal time that I've taken off. Uh, so that's something to include. Uh, and something to take note of. And let's say you, you want to clear them all, you would just click clear all personal times and it'll wipe everything for you. Um, there's also this tip section. So after this this class, if you guys you know want to review something or you guys aren't sure about something, if you click the tip section, it'll pop up a little, um, a little help uh, or frequently asked questions tab that you can go through. So here's some things that it talks about. I'm just quickly going to cycle through them. Awesome. And then just like Greg said before, it explains multi-term courses as well. And then that's it. Um, a, a neat feature that we have uh, in the timetable as well is um, like an auto sorting tool. So let's say, for example, um, you want the most days off, right? So I'm going to go check and make sure nothing's pinned or nothing's locked in my schedule. Uh, and what it will do is it'll give me a schedule that works with these um, filters that we have on. So let's click most days off and it'll give me a, a schedule that has the most days off. Let's say I want to schedule only in the mornings because I, I work best in the morning. So I click mornings and it'll populate a schedule with only mornings and vice versa, right? So you can play with these um, and it'll easily give you a, a schedule that suits your uh, preferences in terms of how you want your courses. Um, but that is that. So another thing that, uh, Greg wanted me to point out was, um, the difference between online virtual, uh, and in person. And you're probably wondering, okay, like, this is great. I have my schedule ready, but I don't know if my course is going to be, uh, in person or whether it's virtual. How do I know? So let's go underneath, um, your courses. So, uh, for this purpose, it's auto populated me with course six. So I go to the right here. It says McMaster University, that's where the course is held. And then it says a virtual classroom. So like Greg said, virtual just means that um, you have class at a certain time of the day and it is a synchronous class, meaning that at, um, what is this? Uh, 1230 uh, to 215, you would have um, your class that you'd have to log on to and your professor will be delivering a live lecture online. Um, and then there's other options. A perfect example here is Commerce 1 MA3. So if I go to the right hand side, I take a look, it says in person. And that means that there are in person components to this class. And along with that, it'll give you the location of your class. So um, this in-person class will have in-person components and the building that it's in is the John Hodgkins engineering building. We call it JHE. That's the acronym. And the room is the 376th room and your professor is listed at the bottom. Uh, alternatively, if you say, Hey, uh, you know what? I, I don't want to go to cl uh, in-person class. I need something that's virtual. If it doesn't auto populate something like this, so this is, uh, it's showing right here. So uh, a lecture three and lecture eight are at the same time. The difference is that 
Lecture 8 is a virtual classroom. So if I want a virtual classroom, nothing's going to change on my schedule, but what will change is the delivery mechanism. So now, uh, instead of having to go in person, you are now in a virtual classroom. Um, and like Greg said, uh, there is also the online option, meaning uh, this is go at your own pace. Um, your instructor will release your content uh, every week or every every so often when they decide is fit and you would complete the content um, at your own pace and you would do the coursework like that and it'll say online. Uh, the location is obviously online, so McMaster online, and here's your professors that you would choose from. Um, now that is that is the how to put in your courses into your schedule and some of the nuances um, of course selection. What we're going to do now is uh, because I can't like you can go in and set up your classes. That's fine. You can set up your favorites, but this is not going to show you the actual enrollment process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the spring and uh, summer semester to show you what it's going to look like when you go to enroll for your courses. So. Let's do that. So this is, I'm now in the spring and summer semester. So let's see if I have any favorites saved. I believe I do. Okay. Uh, um, let's do Commerce 1 MA3, Commerce 3 AC3. And this is just to show you guys different messaging that will appear when you guys go to enroll. Obviously, you guys are first years and you will not be enrolling in Commerce 3 AC3. So this is just for the purpose of showing you the messaging that um, you guys will get when you go to enroll. So 3 AC3 and 4 PA3. Oh. Uh, four. oh that's, uh... Greg, would you happen to know a, a summer course that is full that I can show the that's students? full? Um, yes. You can try the 2FB3. 2FB3. Okay, there you go. Uh, let me remove. Awesome. So, uh, just like Greg said, so when you guys go to enroll or when you guys are looking at your schedule, so this is some of the messaging that will appear. So, one of them, one of the errors that you will get is all of the classes conflict with Commerce 2FB3. So, um, this might be the case when you go to enroll for your electives. Let's say you really want to take French um, and you put it in your schedule and it looks fine um, for, you know, your favorited, you favorited the schedule when it works. But then once people start enrolling into courses, cores are going to fill up. Um, and now the core that you wanted to take that would work with your schedule is full. Some of the messages that you might get are as follows. So all of the classes of this course conflict with Commerce uh, to FB3, or it, it could be any class. So it'll tell you the exact error message. This just means that you have to pick, um, let's say for this case, this, this is an elective that I'm taking. That means you will have to take a different elective uh, for your uh, schedule. Another one is um, all of these classes are full. So like, like we've reiterated before, you're guaranteed a seat in your required courses. We, however, do not guarantee seats in your electives. So if an elective pops up and it says all of the classes are full um, or you are, for example, if, if, if the course is a required course, email us if you're getting this message because we will guarantee you a seat in a class uh, that is required. But if it's showing up for an elective, there's, there's nothing we can do uh, in terms of helping you enroll into that elective. And that goes for econ courses, um, oh, not, not econ courses, sorry, for electives. Um, and econ is a little bit of a tricky situation, so do email us for those inquiries, but I'm going to show you what it looks like in terms of enrolling into these courses. So let me close this. Actually, yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah. Remove that, remove that. So when I go to enroll, uh, your button here will appear. It'll show as blue and it'll say get this schedule. So we're going to go ahead and click get the schedule. Um, and the actions you will get will show you, um, well, they mean different things. So when you add something to your enrollment cart, all that means is kind of like when you go shopping, you've added it to your cart, but that doesn't mean that you're enrolled. So don't confuse these things. This just means that um, you've added it to your cart and then you, you would have to go back 
later and then hit enroll to verify um, the transaction and to put you into the class. So for this purpose, we're gonna go with enroll, which means you're gonna be put into that class. I'm gonna hit do actions. And if it's successful, you'll get a message here that says added, this class has been added to your schedule, return to select more courses. Um, if the class is, I'll go back and show you another one. Um, commerce, let's do, let's do for example. Oh, um, I'm trying to find a class. Greg, would you happen to know a class where I can show them a requisite that I would not need? Maybe commerce 183. Uh, An elective, rather, do you mean? Uh, yes, just something I wouldn't have a prerequisite for. Um, uh, so that you personally, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is, so just, just for preference, uh, our preface, sorry, I, I was a former student. So, uh, what you guys will see will be a little bit different from what I've seen because I have already taken some of these courses. So, um, it'll be different, but obviously if you as a first year go to enroll in a fourth year commerce course, it's, it's not going to work because you haven't done, um, the prerequisites for the course. So we're just trying to find a course here that would not work just so i can show you the messaging um let's see get the schedule that's another thing this is another message that you might get so you're unable to enroll in this class uh, at this time and the last date to enroll has passed so uh another message you might get here um that it will say is you have not met the requisites for this um this program or this course, sorry, uh, contact a course administrator. Um, or it might say here, uh, your course is full, please select another mm -hmm. core or course. That's now, sorry that. to interrupt. Um, we're getting quite a few questions in the chat about something that I'm hoping you could just go over again. So as you've been, as you started moving into your shopping cart, still a lot of confusion about showing the conflict message. Um, can you register if you still have that conflict message? How do you make the conflict message go away? Okay, um, cool. So let us go back to the fall semester. Because uh, it, it won't show up here because one one girl is not offered. So let's go back to the fall uh, and let's load up our previous schedule. So, uh, like I said before, like when you if you don't save your schedule as a favorite and you close the tab, it'll disappear. So make sure if you do have a schedule that you like, you go ahead and click favorite. So I'm going to load up my previous favorite that I showed you guys how to do. So I'm going to load it and back to the error message. So. No matter what you do, this error message will appear. Um, and all this means is that a certain amount of courses uh, are, are uh, possibilities for this course of the hundreds that there are, or 120 to be specific. Uh, so you can scroll through here and check out all of them. There is a ton. So try each one. This, this message will continue to appear. This won't affect your enrolling process. So. Um, if, if a course that you, let's say I really wanted specifically lecture for tutorial three and it's full, it'll give you that message, but this message won't pop away or go away, sorry, but it, it does not affect your enrolling process. There is enough seats across all of our, um, our cores and our tutorials to make sure that you get a seat. So don't worry about this. Um, it, it's just showing you that, you know, no matter what you do, there's going to be a certain amount of classes that just won't work with your schedule because they are overlapping time-wise. So don't don't worry about that. Yeah. So for for the one row course, the, there are thirty tutorials, um, and some of them are scheduled at the same time as each other, so they're just going to automatically be a conflict. But there's thirty of them to choose from. Uh, we do hear from students that tell us, "I tried the first five, and they're all full, but tutorials eleven through 19 still have space, right? So you just need to continue to look at it. Um, what we do is we're tracking it. So um, if, if you've tried a number of these and it's not working, um, you can ask us and we can tell you uh, which are the open ones. Uh, we try to set, make, create a schedule um, to share which are the open sections, um, if that's something. Because again, there's 30 of them. Um, so it is a lot. I appreciate 
And Greg, can you clarify, we're getting uh, quite a few questions about um, if I have a conflict and two courses overlap, is it my choice to register that way? We, we, I'm assuming so, we don't want to encourage people to register in two courses at the same time. <laughs> yeah, so, so students cannot enroll into co two courses at the same time um, at any point over their undergraduate um, with your group school of business. Uh, we want to, uh, our, uh, much of our courses, uh, especially in upper years, are very group based um, and participation and discussion based. Uh, so it's important that you're attending each of your different courses and there's a lot of in-class assessments and assignments and presentations. Uh, so we do not allow students to uh, enroll into conflicting schedules. Um, I have lots of students asking to book an academic advising appointment. Can we just clarify that level one students will not be able to um, book academic advising appointments right now this week, um, but maybe share some of the other strategies, the drop in hours we're going to be having for them? Sure. So um, I'm happy to sort of wrap things up once NAVs finished the demo. And then I have this, a slide that shares the, the drop in dates. Okay, so like Greg said, we're just gonna quickly wrap this up. Um, so this is your my timetable. I'm going to uh, mosaic, but first I need to make sure I am enrolled, and I will show you what it looks like um, on your mosaic. So just give me a moment here. Okay, I'm enrolled. Uh, and just to just to clarify uh, for students asking, um, I clicked enrolled. How do I know if it registered? So it'll say, it'll give you the message here that says enrolled, but we'll also verify on Mosaic. So what we always tell students, just make sure you check your Mosaic portal on, at your student center and it'll tell you if you're enrolled. So let's go to the portal. So oh, again, when you open up your Mosaic, it'll open up to this. We're gonna click student center. And here we are. So when the time comes and it's September and you've enrolled into your courses, this is exactly what you're going to see. You're going to open up your student center and it'll say upcoming schedule. It'll tell you the class that you've enrolled in. Uh, the core is the, the specific slot that you're enrolled in and it'll say virtual classroom um, 6.30 to 9.30. Uh, and now we're going to take it a step further. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you guys what it looks like to pull up your schedule. So uh, for students wondering, I've enrolled into my, my courses. How do I know what it looks like on a weekly basis? So we're gonna click weekly schedule. Um, and right there, if you guys can see, it is now populated and showing uh, what time of the, the day uh, your classes are at. And obviously if I had a full schedule, it would show all of my classes here. Yeah, and this is a very fine point that I expect most of you will forget by the time September rolls around. But because of Labor Day, when you look at your first week of the term, you won't see any classes on Monday. You'll say, where's my Monday classes? You just need to go to the next week and you'll see your full regular schedule. Next week, um, oh, if it loads, yeah, there you go. So I've changed the week on the top and the course is still there. So. Uh, play with that and see um, see that. You can also go to your list view and that'll show you, um, I don't know anyone that personally used this in my, in my four years at McMaster, but if you're curious to see it in the list view, you can. Uh, but people tend to go with the weekly schedule right here. Uh, and now we're gonna go back and I'm gonna show you uh, what it looks like to hard enroll as we call it. and do it the other way. So um, this is your student center. Uh, you're going to click enroll. Awesome. And it'll say uh, for, for your case, it'll say my uh, 2021 fall class schedule and it'll populate your classes here. Let's say that you are specifically looking for a class. So um, there's a couple of options. Unless you know the course code, uh, the class number, sorry, the class number is what's written right here in these four digits right here. So if I pop these digits into here and hit enter, it'll automatically give me this specific class, which is Commerce 1 MA3 Core 2. Uh, but for students just looking for courses, uh, there's a couple methods that we can use. So there is the class search, there is my requirements, and there is my planner. So we're going to start off with the my, uh, class search. So you're going to hit search. 
Uh, and now you're going to be shown the screen and it'll say the term on the top and it'll give you the search criteria that you can go through. So what we recommend is we recommend you click the subject. Uh, and a common mistake that students make is they say, well, I can't find any of my courses. I typed in business and there was no courses. The course code for uh, business one is commerce. So if you go here and you scroll through all these courses, you should see commerce right here at the bottom. We're going to click select commerce uh, and you don't have to change anything else. All you have to do is hit search. And once you hit search, it'll show every single course that is, that is currently listed. And what's neat about looking at the mosaic side of things is you can see whether the course is closed or open. So um, let's say it comes to enrollment time and your enrollment appointment is a later uh, time. You can go through and see uh, if specific cores that you wanted are open or closed. So if it's open, it'll show as a green uh, circle or if it's totally closed, meaning the course is totally full, uh, it'll show as a, a blue square. However, it's important to note that just because it's showing open doesn't necessarily mean that um, there is seats for you. So uh, there's something called the reserve capacity, which I'll let Greg speak to. Um, but the reserve capacity just means that um, there's currently seats available in the core, but they are not um, for you. They're being reserved for uh, a student in a faculty that needs them. So that's very common in econ courses because econ is required by the economic students. It's required by business students. Um, there's students pursuing minors that require uh, econ. So uh, if you come into here and you say, well, econ, this course, or say this is econ, uh, this core of econ is showing as open. Um, why can't I enroll? Well, that's because seats for that specific core are being reserved by their, uh, their faculty for them. So uh, this just means that there's seats available. It doesn't necessarily mean that you can enroll if there's a reserve capacity set on that course. But if it shows as blue like this, that means the course is totally full and there's no more seats left. So just a nuance um, to, to look at. So let's say I want to, I searched it up and now I wanna select uh, a course. So I'm gonna select for this purpose, um, oh, well, this is a spring course. Let's not do that one, sorry. Uh, let's go back. Enroll. There you go, a search. You can also just type in commerce as well. So commerce, just make sure your spelling is correct. Click search. Um, and let's pick a summer course. Let's go with, there's not many options here that are still open. Sure, let's go with uh, 3AC3. So let's select 3AC3. Uh, you would go, Click next. And then once you have it in your shopping cart, so this is what it looks like when you have something in your shopping cart. So when you go to Mosaic and you click a class just like this, uh, it'll say, okay, now you have Commerce 3AC3 or whatever course you're looking for, it'll show up in your shopping cart and you would click proceed to step two of three. And now it's gonna say what the status is. It's open, closed, or if there's a wait list on, and then you would click finish enrolling. So if I click finish enrolling, uh, it should give me an error message. Oh, okay, so I've been added to this class. So um, in this case, it was added to my schedule, but if, if it shows up that you can't, it'll, it'll give you the error message. So it'll give you the red X and it'll say, um, for so-and-so reason, whether it's requisites not being met or uh, if there is a reserve capacity um, and there's a few other reasons. It'll tell you the exact reason that uh, the class has not been added to your schedule. So now we're gonna explore some other functions. Uh, if you look at the top right here, and once you click enroll, um, there is your class schedule, add, drop, or swap. So um, when you wanna go and drop a course, let's say you've decided to take an elective and you really don't wanna take it anymore, you could drop the course. Um, so these are the courses that I just signed up for. Uh, for this case, I'm going to drop the three AC3. So you click the button here and you just click, simply click drop select classes 
or selected classes. You had finished dropping. And there you go. You'll get the message that says your class has been su successfully dropped um, or X is you have not been able to drop your class. Most times you should be able to drop your class fairly simply. And now what I'm gonna show you is the swap function. So the swap function is when, um, let's say you have uh, multiple cores um, that, that you would want to switch between. So let's say um, I'm in core one of commerce, uh, one MA3, and I really want core two. So we don't recommend dropping the entire course. So what we do recommend is swapping. So you would come into here. Um, so this is a summer course, so there are summer uh, semester. So there's only one core. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap it with a different class. But if you wanted to swap it with the same class, you just want, let's say a different tutorial or you want a different uh, core, you would again, come here in the class search, type in the class that you want. So type in commerce or econ or whatever elective that you choose. You can come into here um, and let's say there was another core available for Commerce 1 MA3. I would simply click select, but for uh, demonstration purposes, I'm going to select a different course. So I'm gonna select 3AC3 again, right? So uh, it'll say the lecture that you, or the class right here, so Commerce 3AC3, I'm gonna hit next. And right here. So. It's going to say you are replacing this class. So the class that I want to get rid of is Commerce 1 MA3, and I want to replace it with Commerce 3 AC3. So you would just hit finish swapping. And there you go. So it, it gives me the message that says you have swapped Commerce 1 MA3 with Commerce 3 AC3, um, and it's been successfully replaced. So now I can go back, I can go to my class schedule. And now we'll say, I'm now enrolled in uh, 3AC3, uh, and this is the time of the class. Now you can just simply go back to your weekly calendar view. And if it's available, yep, right there. And now I've successfully enrolled into Commerce 3AC3. And that is, that's essentially it in terms of enrolling. That's, that's the gist of it. So we do recommend you use my timetable to um, view your classes and set them up in a manner where you can visually see them. Uh, but this is more so for later on in the semester when you're looking to get a specific tutorial with your friend or you're looking to get a specific core, uh, you would more, most likely use this function available on Mosaic. Nav, we're getting lots of questions about registration appointments. Um, can you remind students or possibly show them how you find your specific time and date? Um, <laughs> And, and I just want to remind students that registration appointments cannot be changed. They are auto-generated and we have no power to change them for you. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so while now, can you navigate, navigate to where we can see it? And then I just wanted, I've seen a few questions come up in the chat um, that I wanted to address, but now if you can navigate to where the enrollment appointments are, but um, sure. yeah, I've seen so, several yeah. questions about, do I need to take stats? Do I need to take um, math one FO3? All of those questions, the, all of those requirements are from previous years. So just make sure you're looking at the current, what's in this presentation, uh, we're, we'll send a follow up with a business one and IBH one courses, and then also in the calendar, but you should see that there is no math one FO3, there is no stats one LL3. All of those are from previous versions. So just more than anything else, just make sure you're checking the current version of your program. Absolutely. Uh, so you're going to pop up again on your student center when you open it up. So click the student center tile. And when you open it up, um, I obviously am no longer a student, so it will not show. But for current students, it'll show right here. So um, this is my schedule. And it'll say right here in the enrollment dates right here. It'll say um, when you can begin adding your classes and your specific enrollment uh, time. So we click enrollment dates, it shows this, but it, it should say your specific um, your specific time right in this corner right here. I know we've had some issues with students clicking. Uh, let's say if I had my enrollment appointment, I'd click here. Uh, normally you'd be able to change your semester here. I don't know if that's because I'm currently staff or 
um, if that's if students can change, but you should be able to click right here and change your um, your term and see the specific times here. If you can't though, um, please let us know. But uh, again, it's pretty straightforward in terms of where to find it. You would just again student center and right hand side. It'll pop up right here once this loads. There we go. Yeah. So under enrollment dates, that's when you know when you can start enrolling. Yeah, great. Thanks. Okay, so I'm just going to share just one or two slides left and then have to answer. Um, I see there's a ton of questions. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so here's so there are the enrollment appointments. Um, so, you should see enrollment opens on June the 28th. And as Lisa mentioned, unfortunately, we cannot change any of the times. Uh, Enrollment a point. So basically this is when your enrollment opens, right? It doesn't close. So appointments, a funny word that I wouldn't use if I were creating the system, uh, but that's what it is. Um, but it's just the time that your appointment opens. So even if you're not home at three o'clock on June the 28th, that's fine. Your enrollment is open as of that time, if that's your assigned time, but then it just stays open. And then again, as I mentioned, you have until mid September to make changes. So again, that just Please be patient uh, and know that, uh, and this is where you can talk to upper year students and upper year students will tell you that things tend to work out, uh, but it's just not all going to happen on this one particular date. Um, and then as Lisa mentioned, uh, we are holding uh, enrollment support drop-in sessions uh, during once enrollment is open, because um, there's a lot of questions I think that you might have today that you won't necessarily have when you're actually working through the system. Um, so this is where we're going to have you working with some of our upper year students to go through, um, you know, executing on the shopping cart and enrolling in courses and swapping courses, et cetera. Um, so we'll have time for to be able to sit, actually sit and work with you. Um, but again, we, we deal, we will have an opportunity to meet with academic advisors over the course of the, the next many weeks um, to look into specific requirements or again um, if you want to have a reduced load or if you need to work with SAS to have a particular timing we have lots of time to to do that um, but again over sort of these days we just want you to make sure you're enrolling and do everything you have your schedule and then we have a lot of time to, to fine-tune it okay okay so um I have a few things that I have a couple of things that I wanted to clarify just um, before because I think they're going to come up as questions, uh, okay. but just the, the reserve cap, so reserve capacity. So I'll use our courses as an example. So for level one um, accounting um, for business one, uh, there's 400 seats in section one. Of those 400 seats, 350 of them are for business one students. 20 of them are for math and stat students, 20 of them are for uh, engineering and management students, and 10 of them are for students that are enrolling um, to minor in business. So we've taken a big number of um, seats and we've divided them across different programs. So you might see that accounting, uh, that it, there are seats, but as Nav mentioned, uh, that might be a seat that's been allocated to an engineering and management student. And then similarly, when you're enrolling into macroeconomics, um, of those 600 seats, um, you know, 400 of them are for business students, and then 100 of them are for uh, economic students and 50 for uh, science students, et cetera. So that's where you might see this reserve cap. Um, as we approach the start of the term, we take off the reserve caps. Right, so we have an idea of the, the sort of the, the number of students um, across the different programs that need these courses. Um, but again, if, if we've set aside 25 seats for engineering and management, and in August we see that only five people have signed up, we open up the rest of those 20 seats for everybody. So that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at your electives. Uh, when you're enrolling into French or hope to enroll into French, uh, you might not be able to enroll on day one, but in August, um, they will open up additional seats more broadly. Um, and that's when you'll be able to, to take those seats. So that, that's what reserve cap is. Um, that's a really common question that we get. Okay, Greg. Um, 
I'm going to try to aggregate some of these questions for you. So could you just once again speak a little bit about the two economics courses? Um, students can take both in the fall. Um, they're just wondering if they have to, and are there lots of seats in the winter? <laughs> yeah, so about two thirds of the seats that have been allocated to business are in the winter term. So um, roughly a, a third of students will take it in, in the fall. And again, that's virtual. So that's gonna work out really well for a good number of our students that are not in the province. Um, so it's best to take it in the fall anyways, uh, when it is the virtual offering, um, but the bulk of our students will take it in the winter term. Um, and there's no real advantage or disadvantage um, to taking them. There's not an order. One is not prerequisite to the other. Um, yeah, they're completely independent courses that you can take together, one before the other. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Questions about, um, the specific question is Commerce 1DA3 and 1E03 only offered in person. Could you speak um, about the fact that there will be virtual options in fall for all required courses and what in-person actually means and doesn't mean? Sure. So what in-person means is that there will be uh, you'll be expected to be in a classroom on campus at some point on some schedule. So again, depending on the class, that might mean you're coming to campus uh, one day a week. It might mean you're coming to class three days a week. So that's for you to, that's going to depend on the room and the number of students that are enrolled, as well as what the uh, distancing requirements are going to be. So it just means that if you have the capacity and interest in coming to campus, uh, so sign up for an in-person uh, if you know you cannot, then sign up for a, a virtual section. Uh, there will uh, be virtual sections of 1DA3 as well as 1EO3. So you can see there is 1DA3 is already scheduled. Uh, section one, I believe, is virtual. Uh, it's an 8.30 a.m. Uh, Ontario time. Uh, and then 1EO3, we're just finalizing which of those four sections is going to be virtual, but there'll be a virtual section of each of those classes. And can you speak to the One Grow tutorials? What if a student, particularly an international student, cannot attend an in-person tutorial for One Grow? Sure. So about two thirds of our tutorials are in-person and one third are virtual. So there are virtual tutorial options. And then again, we, based on um, a survey we did last year in the One Grow class with our level one students, we heard that about 70% of students um, we're hoping to be on campus and we use that as our, as our starting point. Um, and this is where this is going to be a process. If I see that it's really 50-50, um, then we're going to have to look at the tutorials and adding additional in-person or adding additional uh, virtual sections. Can you just remind people the difference between the shopping cart versus making a timetable or a schedule? And are they guaranteed to get the courses in their preferred timetable uh, when they register? So uh, unfortunately, um, no, because your favorite timetable is probably the same favorite timetable as 500 other people. Um, so unfortunately, it doesn't work out that way um, necessarily. Uh, I will say that as you enroll um, over the course of your four or five years, uh, you have earlier and earlier enrollment appointments. And I will say that by your fourth year, you tend to get your ideal schedule. Um, but in the first year where we have um, very large classes and everyone's taking the same classes, uh, we, we cannot guarantee your preferred section. However, you do have um, a guarantee that you will get all of your required courses. So you'll always get a seat in one AA3 in the fall. However, you may not get section two versus section six. Thank you. Can you tell people the difference between a tutorial and a lecture? Uh, so you'll see tutorials often with our level one and two classes because they are such large classes. Uh, the, the classes are often used for the lecture component, whereas the tutorials are smaller groups um, with a TA or with the instructor, uh, where it's more applied or discussion based um, and more of that two way interaction. Um, so, so for one grow, as an example, uh, there is a lecture um, and you're in a group, um, each lecture is going to have about 300, 250 students per lecture, um, but each of the different tutorial groups is about 35 students. Um, so you'll get to know those 34 other students as well as that TA and work with them through the year. Great. 
Greg, what if my enrollment date is not 9 a.m. on June 28th? What if I have something in the evening or the next day? Does that mean I'm not going to get all of my classes? So you're guaranteed to get all of your required courses. Again, you're not necessarily the section um, that you're initially hoping for. Uh, however, again, as we go through the next you know, several months, there will be lots of opportunities um, to swap into uh, those preferred sections. And that's what the swap function is. So you're in section two, but you want section four. We don't want you to withdraw from section two and try to add four because your section two might disappear in the meantime. Uh, so you're able to keep your current seat and then look for opportunities to swap into your preferred section. And what about popular electives, Greg? <clears throat> They're very popular. <laughs> Again, so, I, I mean, just like, they, they, recommend they, 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 they people felt, keep checking back yeah. and because sometimes people register in courses and then change their minds. So maybe we can speak a little bit more about how you can keep changing your registration through to add drop. Yeah. And again, that's, that's it's a swap function. So say you are interested in history 101 um, and you're less interested in anthropology 101 but their seats, grab the seat in Anthropology 101, and then you just look to be able to swap into the History 101. Okay. So and again, it's just, it's, con it's, it's, and again, as I mentioned, seats absolutely open up as we approach term date. So whether that student's switching or more likely um, when these reserve capacities come off. So when the reserve caps come off, that's when there's like a flood of seats all at once. <laughs> so you just need to be mindful um, we do share dates uh, when I have a student uh, asking when we're opening up our reserve caps for the fall. Uh, I have a date, um, but that date's going to uh, vary by program. So history might release their fall term seats on August the 15th and English might release their seats on August the 21st. Um, so you need to um, oftentimes the department or program will share that information, um, but it's just being you need to sort of kind of check back and just make a habit of checking back. And again, even into the beginning of the term, some students go to their first week of class and say, wow, that, uh, that wasn't what I expected, or I saw the outline and the outline has six presentations and I don't like doing presentations or prefer not to do presentations, or this has a 50% essay at the end. And oh my gosh, I don't really want to sign up for a class that has a 50% essay as my elective. Um, people will withdraw and that opens up seats so again, it's going to be constantly, um, continually um, looking for those opportunities. But again, know that your required courses are, are guaranteed. So you're able to meet your program requirements. Um, and then the electives, again, um, yeah, you just you keep trying. And then again, if, if um, we can talk about, we'll talk about it a little bit later. It's a little bit fine, finer detail, but uh, you are able to move to level two. Um, if you've done your required business courses and passed at least 24 units. So even if you said, I can't find an elective that I like, you don't have to take that elective now. You can plan to take it in the summer. You can plan to take it later. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit finer detail than I wanted to get into today. But again, I don't expect that you don't have to take French if you don't want to take French or, or history or whatever course. We're not going to make you take an elective that you don't want to take. Um, so there is there is an approach if that's the case, but you can't find anything that you're interested in for electives. Um, if there's two different lectures going on, and I think, again, students are going to maybe be surprised to see that each course has multiple sections. So you've got different lectures going on at the same time. What does that mean and which one do they pick? Um, so just a reminder, we, we, we don't let you enroll in two different courses that have lectures that conflict. You can't take two courses if they're offered at the same time. Um, but if there's multiple lectures available, does it matter which one they pick, Greg? Um, if I'm understanding correctly, if, if there's two sections of accounting that are overlapping, there's just ones with this instructor and ones with that instructor, doesn't matter which one you pick. Um, just ensure, again, like I'll say accounting, both instructors are teaching virtually, so it doesn't really matter. Um, you might find with one MA3, and I don't know if they're overlapping, but some one instructor is teaching in person and one instructor is teaching virtually, and they might have overlapping sections. So just make sure you're understanding that this one is in person and this one is virtual. 
I know we don't want to get into a lot of questions about fall, but if a student has an in-person class that ends at 1020 and a virtual class that starts at 1030, do we anticipate there will be spaces for them to complete that virtual class on campus? Because they obviously won't have time to drive home. Yep. Um, so I know that's being discussed and I'm hoping that that's being addressed at the town hall uh, today. Thank you. Okay, there's quite a few individual questions about personal prereqs. I'm still enrolled in a math course this, this uh, summer. We're not going to get into those individual questions. Um, if, you, if you have questions about conditions that are in your letter of offer, you can uh, email buzzcom at mcmaster.ca. I'm just going through to see if there's anything. Um, maybe just another so what happens when you save a schedule as a favorite? You are not automatically registered in that schedule. Again, just want to be clear about that. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Um, and what are the elective minor or minors that business students cannot take? Uh, the, the business minors. So minor in finance, minor in accounting, minor in information systems. Uh, I think that's it. Minor in business. So you can't minor in business because your major is in business. Okay. Um, do we choose either a lecture or a tutorial based on preference or do we have to take both? <laughs> uh, so you have to sign up for that. You have to take a tutorial. A tutorial. So not all courses have tutorials and where courses do have tutorials, they're there for a reason. Uh, so the expectation is, is that you're participating in both. Um, getting starting to get lots of questions about residence and if I'm in residence can I use the library again these are not faculty decisions so please 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 go to the provost um, uh, event today at four or watch the video afterwards um, where is there in a list of electives we can choose from so in the calendar there is a section that is specifically electives open to level one students um, so that's a good place so I'll see if I can navigate there well, you I, I have also question. put, I have also, Greg, put a link to the 2021 program notes. So again, maybe you could tell students a little bit about what the calendar is and why it's such an important tool. Uh, sure. So the, and I'll, I'll share my screen in a second. Um, so yeah, so the academic calendar. So really this is, um, contracts a strong word, but the contract that you have with the university that has the rules and regulations for McMaster, as well as all the program information. Um, so you can see here's the programs by faculty. Here's our DeGroote School of Business. So it tells you who is part of the DeGroote School of Business, all of our faculty, where they went to school. You can see our team me. Um, then there's some notes around again, what, what is your um, sort of obligations as a student? So it's the obligations of both sides. So student um, responsibility is you're to manage your McMaster email account. So you send us and you send us questions um, or information from your McMaster account. So we know that it's you. If I get an email um, from I love the Raptors at Gmail, I don't know who I'm talking to. Um, so it's important that you're using McMaster and we're sending you information to this account. So we send it, we assume that you've read it. So you can't tell us that, I'm sorry, I didn't know, uh, I, I, I didn't read my email. So that rule doesn't apply to me. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately it does. And anything that we send to your McMaster account, we consider received. So that's just one aspect. Um, as we go through, lots of information. Again, uh, I think you need to look at this as required but I, I can tell you not <laughs> a high portion of our students have probably read this. But what's important here is that you're looking at your program for students. So again, we have an IBH one um, for here. So if you're an IBH student, the program hasn't changed in a couple of years. So you can look at the 2019 or later version for commerce, business one students, you have a new program. So any student that's asking me or asking about stats, there is no stats here. Stats 1L3, 1LL3, don't even think about it. None of that is relevant to you, 
Okay. So if you're starting the program this coming year, these are your requirements. These are in the calendar. This is from our slides that we just shared. We have a handout we'll send you. This is what you need to understand for level one. Okay. And then you'll see what's required in level two and what's required in level three. But, you know, all that information is there. How do I apply for internship? Um, what do I need to do to get to level two? All of that here, we'll talk about this in one pro. So, you know, what do you need to do to qualify? What average do I need to retain? Um, all of that's here. So this is great if you read it, um, but we will talk about this. Um, but again, for the next couple of weeks, I really want you to focus on this. This is what you need to know for the next six weeks. And Greg, can I remind students, um, we gave you, we sent you an email uh, that had an onboarding handbook, lots of great information in there, including how to activate your Mac ID. We're starting to get lots of questions now in the chat about McMaster emails. Um, again, very clear step-by-step -step information about how to activate your Mac ID, which then unlocks your McMaster email. So please take some time and read that orientation guide. It's got lots of great links and lots of great information in that. Okay, um, so people are still asking for one-on-one -on -one conversations to talk about stuff. Greg? Yeah, so I plan to, plan to attend the drop-in, but please review. I just, I don't want you to slow yourself down waiting because we have a team, you've seen the team, we have you know, eight-ish people and we have 4,000 students. Um, so a lot of this is really you um, taking responsibility. And when we get into the beginning of the term, I have a great take responsibility speech prepared for you. Uh, so this is one of the big pieces of transitioning to university um, is again, the, the accountability is upon you. Uh, we're here to support you. And again, over the next, I think you will have the opportunity to meet with our team. Um, again, it's, but we can't see all students over the next several weeks. Um, so we have made um, arrangements for you to be supported um, from a logistics perspective to get you into those courses. But again, where you do have individualized questions and concerns, um, we'll have time for that, but it's not going to be during the next several weeks while we're focusing on getting students enrolled into their required courses. Can I also just remind students too, because I think maybe this is a little bit different than high school. Not every course is offered every term. Not every course you see in fall and winter will be offered in spring, summer, and, and that schedule will be, will be released later in the term. So please, again, you have to be, it's not just about being mindful of the current term, you have to think ahead a little bit. It's, it's not that every course is offered all the time. Okay. I think we have got through all the credit uh, questions. We've answered about 150 questions today. So I hope, uh, I hope students found that helpful. And so, so like I said, we've recorded this, um, so we'll share this, and we're doing a second um, sitting of this, so you're welcome to join again, um, but we're also going to take the questions that we hear from the second uh, webinar, and where we're hearing common questions, we want to make that available to you, so you understand, again, what's the difference between uh, in-person and virtual, or what's the difference between virtual and online, uh, we want to make sure that you have that information. Okay, so um, yeah, so thank you very, very much. Um, again, we'll, uh, we'll notify you, we'll, we'll send a message out to um, all of our incoming students so you know where to find uh, the video once we have it um, sort of edited and transcribed properly. Um, again, if you're welcome to come again to the second sitting, uh, if you're interested, um, I'll be here again, Nav will be here again. We'll have a few less people from our team um, here then as well, um, but again, uh, we're very excited um, for you to start. I know that you're likely uh, anxious. Um, just know that you are not the first group to go um, through red enrollment. This is something that happens every year and we get through it every year. So this is where you get have, take the chance to meet with your upper year students. Um, they're here to support you as well. So we have those slots available um, with upper year students to help you through the process. Um, yeah, and we're, we're very excited. Um, we're very excited for the summer and for the coming year. So uh, thank you for joining today. Sorry, Greg. Else, Lisa? Just, 
Yeah, one. Uh, 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 so anybody who has made, and we're not sure how this has happened, but if anybody has booked an academic advising appointment, I'm sorry, but that is going to be canceled. Um, as Greg said, we're going to have different approach for you with lots of drop in hours um, once your registration opens. Um, and you know, we cannot predict what courses are being offered for spring summer right now. So um, if you're you're not planning on taking a full course load, uh, Greg, any advice? Because they're wanting to see what's offered in spring summer so they know what to take in fall winter. Yeah, so that, that's where we can, that's where you can have the opportunity to sign up, sign up for everything. <laughs> and then again, we can, when once you meet with someone and you hear that accounting has been off for the last 10 of 10 summers, then you can say, well, maybe I'll wait, not take accounting in my fall term, right? But just wait, sign up for it in the meantime. Um, and then again, we can have those discussions. Okay. Okay. So thank you very, very, very much. Um, it's great to hear um, from people from uh, different, uh, different countries and different time zones. So, um, so thank you and enjoy the rest of your day, uh, afternoon and or evening. Take care.